Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Definitive Skyrim Let's Play. Last episode, we just finished exploring around Riverwood. And we've since gone back to Riverwood, got a good night's sleep, and Konkin just finished making another entry into his journal. And if you'd like, you can go back and pause and read through it now, or I will be uploading the journal and all the other entries. Uh, and you can find that in the description so that you can read the story thus far from Combkin's perspective uh, whenever you, you'd like. But now it's early in the morning and we're going to start off the day by doing a bit of studying. So as you know, we can't just pick up a tome and instantly learn a spell. Instead, we have to invest some time into learning it. And before we move on, I'm going to adjust the fatigue rate once again. Last episode was the second time now that we got a bit too tired in the middle of an adventure and so we don't want to be become over encumbered when we don't expect it. Four was actually the default for the mod. I increased it thinking that it was going to be too slow but turns out they had the right idea. But today, we're going to go ahead and head to Bleak Falls Barrow. So earlier on, we had gone to the Riverwood Trader and found out about a missing relic, a Golden Claw. And we've been offered a sizable reward for going and finding it. Take what you need, we know some bandits back. took it and that they are up in the barrows. So now that we've explored a bit, gotten our bearings, and uh, geared up a bit and leveled up, I think it's now time that we can go ahead and try to find this Golden Claw. But first we're gonna go through and sell some things. Make sure we have plenty of carry weight. Now normally I wouldn't sell just uh, silver or gold ingots because you can instead use it to craft jewelry. But I don't think we quite have the skill yet to do that. And they're quite heavy. So I'm going to go ahead and sell them since they're still worth a pretty good amount. Good day. So we know that Camilla told us how to get there. But that's also how everybody gets there. And so if there are bandits patrolling for keeping watch. They're probably keeping a good eye on that main path. So instead, we're gonna try to find a back road, some other way up the mountain to the barrows. Also, uh, previously we acquired a treasure map, and so if I can find it, yep, 
Yeah, so as you can see, we know there is a hidden chest somewhere near Riverwood, along the river. So, in the process, we can also try to find that chest. And here we are. A chest with some nice loot. So, I'm pretty sure that if you don't have the treasure map, these chests won't appear. I could be mistaken, but I feel like I've gone to locations of chests before, and I couldn't find them unless I had the treasure map. So we're going to keep going and try to find a path or any easy way to get up the mountain, but we have some necromancers, and I'm pretty sure they're from a random encounter. This is a location where you can find a bunch of random encounters. So like I've said before, the mages kind of scare me. They seem to be using frost spells, which zaps my stamina, making it harder to run away. And I want to use a stamina potion, but it don't, doesn't look like I have any. So, rather than fight these necromancers myself, I'm going to lead them towards Riverwood, and hope that somebody in town will see them and come, come help out. From the sounds of it, it seems like they've drawn the attention of some people. I'm gonna try to see if it can help out, but I don't wanna don't wanna risk hitting any of the people from town. It looks like Hod and Sven came to help. Sven being useful for once. Don't have to don't seem to have much of worth, but we did get a new spell. But of course, still have to dedicate the time to learn it. But now we can get back to trying to find a way up the mountain. We can see the barrows from here. Let's see if there's a way up. We could try to just scale up the mountain, but let's see if there's a more direct path. Camilla did mention a watchtower, which this seems to be it, and it looks like we have a path leading up behind it. So hopefully if there are any bandits keeping watch, they won't be looking this way, they'll be looking at the main path. quickly mine this ore. Hopefully we don't get discovered. Alright, so we do have a bandit, but it looks like they got 
a patrolling path of some kind. So let's wait and see if they come back. We can hit them with an arrow in the back. So that's one down, but it looks like there's at least another one. And unfortunately, they ran directly to us. Let's try to create some distance. <laughs> and it looks like they've got themselves caught on a rock. So easy for us to take a few shots and we end up getting an arrow straight through the neck. And I'm trying to grab the body before it falls all the way down the, the cliff. Alright, so the two bandits that were keeping watch are down. Let's check out the tower, see if there's anybody else in there, if there's any anything worth picking up. I don't know where that one body ended up. Okay, so we do have another bandit. Fortunately, we must have hit part of the wood or something. These bodies have really been eager to fall down the hill. There's the body. Now, I do see that I'm starting to get pretty cold. I have had issues in the past freezing to death on my way to Bleak Falls Barrow. So I'm either going to have to warm up or really hurry so that we can get inside before it gets too late. Now we are freezing. Screen's starting to get a little blurred. I know that snow berries can be used in resist frost potions. I was hoping I could maybe eat one to get the same benefits. We have another level up, but as you can see, the cold has really diminished our stats.
normally I'd be taking this area a bit slower, but with the cold, we, we have to move quickly. Let's see if we can get a shot off. Looks like we were too high. Get another invisibility potion out of these bandits. Alright, we got two down. We just have this one last archer left. They seem to be hitting their shots. Hopefully we can just keep dodging them. But it's not looking good. We'll try to take some potions. Maybe we can get some get him some cover. No and all right, okay. Well, good thing we saved right before this. Having that reduced stamina regeneration from being freezing really hurt us there. We couldn't run away. See if we can land the shot this time. Now let's see if we have any perks we can use this time around. So we are able to get deadly aim, so that will give us some extra sneak attack damage from a bow. Ooh, that's a nice kill cam. Now normally, if I hit that shot, I would take things slow and try to find some good vantage points to take shots on the other two bandits, but we, we don't have that uh, luxury this time around, because we're freezing and we need to get inside, so we're going to have to move quickly. We just need to take out the last bandit. So I grabbed a face cover there. Normally, I would craft a, a mask that was added by a mod. Um... I like it, it's another item to put enchantments on, and I like to put things like water breathing and uh, shout cooldown reduction that kind of fit with a item over your mouth. But it's also nice, because with a roguelike character like this one, you don't want your identity to be exposed, like to conceal your identity. So all the bandits are down, but we need to hurry and get inside before we freeze to death. Throwing on a different hood, since it's a bit warmer than the mage hood, might be enough to keep us going. Alright, we just need to go inside, and... Mere inches from the doorway, we collapse from freezing. But so rather than just dying, we have the setting where if you freeze, instead of dying you get rescued by a passing traveler or caravan or whatever. I don't know what they were doing up at Bleak Falls Barrow. 
but they dragged us back into Riverwood. And so we're gonna have to sit by the fire and warm up. And then we'll head back. On the bright side, we've cleared out all of the bandits. And so this time we can hurry through. Won't need to stay out in the cold as long. Hopefully we'll be able to make it inside without freezing again. And I'll, although I was considering maybe altering the settings, I think I'm just going to keep them with what they are. I don't think they're too challenging. So we'll just keep them like that. But we need to stay here a few more moments, warm up by the fire. I like the animations that are added. Not sure if they're added by Frostfall or by Campfire, but they're nice. Just waiting until we are at the max warmth we can be. Alright, so we are completely warm now. So after eating and drinking real quick, I'll head outside and that was some weird combination of animations that teleported us to the door. I'm not sure what just happened, but we'll head back outside anyways. So I'm going to go ahead and walk back to Bleak Falls Barrow, and I'll just cut to when we get there. So I'll see you in a moment. All right, we are back at Bleak Falls Barrow, making our way up to the entrance. And since we have a bit of time now, I'm just gonna go look around and try to find the other body of that bandit we sniped earlier. And so now, when I usually clear this out, I'd snipe that first bandit, and then I'd make my way this way, sneak around the outside, and then I'd try to find a, another good vantage point. And what you can actually do is you can get on top of the barrow itself, on top of this archway up here, and you can have a nice little view of the bandits. There's also some stuff hidden back here. I know at least part of this is mod added. So I don't know if there's actually anything here on a regular a vanilla playthrough, but... And actually... I'm pretty sure there's supposed to be a ring in that lock, in that strong box. So perhaps there's a conflict, or or maybe the mod has since changed the location of the ring and didn't move the strong box. But if there is an issue, we'll deal with it later on. But let's get inside so we don't freeze again. And it looks like once we take out these bandits, we'll be able to warm up by a fire.
Looks like they had to fight their way through some skeevers. So we hit the sneak attack, but it hardly did any damage. So there we go. Now we can go ahead and stand by the fire for a little bit. This dungeon will probably be a big turning point for Kongen. It will be the first dungeon, well, if you count the mine, second dungeon, but this will be one of the biggest endeavors he's taken on yet. And so we'll see how he manages himself. So we're definitely going to have to be using this torch. It's pretty dark in here. And okay, Harold. So rather than have having septums and all of these urns and on Draugr, which doesn't really make sense since it's an ancient Nordic burial tomb. Don't know why there would be septums in here. Instead, I have a mod that alters some of the currency in the game. And it adds in a few new types, including heralds, which are the currency found in uh, Nordic ruins. It also adds in a new currency for the Dwemer. And there's another currency I that I think it adds uh, to Windhelm. And I guess the idea there is that Ulfric has decided to create his new currency to kind of go with that whole idea of Nord independence. So this guy's level 14, so he's, he's pretty pretty beefy, but we could take him out. I thought we did. That was actually just a wolf. He's almost dead. Right, so we actually could have just sat there. And he would walk up to this lever we're about to take a look at. And since he's obviously too stupid to figure out the puzzle, he would trigger a trap and just die. But instead we decided to go ahead and just take him out ourselves. And... 
Komgen is clearly clever enough to figure out the code. Or maybe it's just that we have it memorized from doing this so often. So there are some, are some septums in that chest, and I'm not sure if that's intended, or if there's something wrong with one of the leveled lists. Either way, as long as the Draugr and, and the Urns have the other currency, I think it'll be fine. Now, normally these Skeever will just kind of all run at me, but it looks like they're afraid. I do have a mod that alters animal AI, and so I think fire can, can scare away a lot of animals, so perhaps between the fire spell and the torch, they've just kind of been scared off. It's just so dark that I can't see them, and I'd rather have them come at me so it's easier for me to kill them. So if you didn't know, there's this little chest hidden behind the spider webs here. Ah! Oh, there's one more. As you may have guessed from all the spider webs, there's a spider, and since it's Skyrim, it's a big spider. I don't know if I'm gonna even try to take on the spider. might just try to summon my wolf and see how it does. Okay, it's actually doing pretty good damage. So I'm just gonna sit here and keep summoning wolves. There you go. Don't leave me for RK's sake. Not gonna lie, when I read out the torch and saw the spider there, I was a little bit startled. Help me out of here. Help me, help. We'll help. First, we have to loot everything. You... Over here! You did it, you killed it. Now cut me down before anything else shows up. Yes, the claw. I know how it works. The claw, the markings, the door in the hall of stories. I know how they all fit together. Help me down and I'll show you. 
You won't believe the power the Nords have hidden there. Does it look like I can move? You have to cut me down first. No, I feel like if we really tried, we could get the claw without cutting him down. It's coming loose. I can feel it. Why should I share the treasure with anyone? And he's just gonna run away and alert all of the Draugr, so we'll take him out first. And he does have a journal on him that goes and explains what the claw is and gives a hint as to how it works, saying that the answer is in the palm of your hand. I guess technically we have the claw. We could head back to Riverwood. I wonder how many people actually do that. They get the claw and just say, you know what? I'm not going any farther. But I think Kongen is a bit too curious for that. And we just grabbed a Shadow Caster, which gives Sneak attack bonus for destruction spells. Which, as I think I mentioned in a previous episode, might come in handy since Draugr are pretty much immune to archery. And I'm pretty sure they're weak to fire. So being able to use our destruction magic with a sneak attack bonus will be very, very helpful. I might try using a bow at some point just to see how effective it is, but I'm pretty sure it's not going to do much. kind of have a dilemma here. It's dark, and I want to use the torch to see, but at the same time, I don't want the torch to give us away. So we're just going to have to suffer in the dark for a little bit. Oh yeah, see, that Draugr went down in an instant. So yeah, all these guys have heralds on them. See this trap ahead, and I'm gonna go ahead and kill my own wolf. Because I'm not going to risk it triggering the trap. Because these traps are actually going to be really lethal. I have a mod that makes them much more dangerous. They're pretty much always going to be a, a one-shot. At least at the lower levels for sure. Yeah, see, I tried to bring out the torch to see, and we've already alerted the Draugr. So 
So we're gonna run back past the trap and maybe if they follow us through they might trigger the trap and end up getting killed in the process. Alright, so it looks like they were able to run by and avoid the trap. Just have this one last guy to take out. So hopefully, that was the last Draugr in this area. Didn't mean to pick up that axe. I think it's safe to bring out the torch. You can hear this trap in the background. It's a bunch of swinging axes. Now normally you could probably just run through these, get a scratch, but it's not too bad. But this is actually going to be pretty challenging. Each of these are most certainly going to be a one-hit kill. And I am not very confident in my ability to either run straight through or be able to kind of see where to stop in between them. So we're going to attempt it next episode. going to stop here. And so until then, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.